Hi everybody! Welcome back to Super Awesome Calculus. I'm Augie Kennedy, and today we're going to start Chapter 3, which is entitled Differentiation Rules. Yeah. God. Sorry, I had to. Um, but anyway, we finished up last time talking about uh, limits, and in the last chapter we figured out uh, different ways to calculate limits, and towards the end of the chapter we introduced the notion of a derivative. And one of the ways that we define the derivative was as a function. Now you can remember, if you remember, you can think of the derivative basically, basically, as the quote-unquote slope of a curve or slope of a tangent line to a curve at a certain point. In general, we discovered that given f of x, if it were continuous and smooth, it could be differentiable, and we'd call f prime x the derivative, and we would say that that is the limit. It's the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. And that's what the derivative was. Now, in this section, we're going to go over various derivatives of polynomials and exponential functions. Using this definition here, or in uh, some of the other formulas presented in the earlier lectures, you can derive, if you want to, everything that we're going to be going over today. So, in the interest of time and of clarity, I'm not going to derive virtually any of these uh, rules in this section, but if you like, you can use this formula right here to go and find out that, in fact, everything that I'm telling you today is true. All right. So, with that in mind, here are some differentiation rules for polynomials and exponentials. Yes. The first one, this is a very simple, simple derivative. Uh, if you remember, we talked about this. The derivative, remember we can write d dx for derivative, okay, of any constant is zero. So in other words, the derivative, if f, well, yeah, if f of x equals seven, Okay, the derivative is 0. If it's 21, the derivative is 0. And this is simple because graphically that f of 7 is a horizontal line right at 7. And the slope of that line is 0. So it stands to reason that any constant function is going to have a derivative of 0. So that's the first rule. The second rule that we'll talk about is semi-related. If f of x is x, the derivative is 1. This is very easy to see because we remember graphically we have the line y equals x, whoops, the line y equals x is the same as f of x equals x. And we know that the slope of that line is 1. So it stands to reason that the slope will be 1. So let's put it together. Let's build on what we know already. Okay? So if we have f of x equals 3x plus 6. If we want to figure out, if we want to differentiate this function, go ahead, look at it. Let's think of the rules. f of x equals x, the derivative is 1. So, f of x equals 3 times x. 3 times 1 is 3. So sure enough, it's 3 plus the derivative of a constant, 6, is 0. So your derivative, f of x, the derivative of the function, f of x equals 3x plus 6, equals 3. 
And that's the answer to that. Which brings us to a great, a great rule. This is one of the most useful rules, and this is the rule for polynomials. Whenever you encounter a polynomial, this is exactly how you're going to go about doing it. If we have d of dx, d dx, of x to the n, x to the any number, n can be anything, equals n x to the n minus 1. So, to give you, a, to break this down and to give you a pretty clear uh, revelation of this, x to the first is 1. x to the first is 1 times x to the 1 minus 1, 0. The answer is 1, just like we just proved. f, the derivative of x squared, equals, well, the n equals 2 in this case, so 2 times x to the n minus 1. The 2 minus 1 is just the first power, so 2x. The derivative of x cubed, n is 3, so 3 x to the 3 minus 1 is 2, 3x squared. And there, I bet you can guess what the derivative of x to the 4th is. Well, hopefully you guessed 4x cubed. x to the 5th, 5x to the 4th. That's the way this works. Now, this also works for things like this. You remember, we looked at this function right here. d dx, the derivative of the square root of x. We learned earlier that this is equal to 1 over 2 square root x. And you remember, it was a very long, laborious task to, to solve that. Well, now you can do it very easily because you remember that the square root of x is the same as x to the one-half. So using the power rule, n equals one-half, so we have one-half times x to the one-half minus one, which is negative one-half. Or, one over two square root of x. They're the same thing. And that's why, that, see that took a couple seconds as opposed to the extremely long way that we figured it out last time. Now there's one other thing, it's kind of like a one-off that we're just going to go over right now. And that's the, uh, that's the exponential function. Now remember that e equals the limit as h approaches zero e to the h minus 1 over h equals 1, okay? Now what that means is that that's, that's what e is. But because, how do I phrase this? Well, I won't phrase it yet. I'll phrase it soon. But here's the point. The derivative of the exponential function, e to the x, is e to the x. <laughs> very simple, very basic. It's its own derivative. Simple as that. All right. Now, there are two rules regarding uh, differentiation, or three rules that we're going to go over very similar to the limit laws. Uh, and you may be able to see how this works. If c is a constant and f is differentiable, this is the constant multiple rule, then d dx of c f of x is the same. It's identical to c times the derivative of f of x. 
In other words, did we, we actually just did this. If we're trying to differentiate the function, let's erase this. If we're trying to differentiate f of x equals 3x squared, this is the same as saying the derivative of this function is 3 times the derivative of x squared. Well, let's see that. We know from the power rule that this should be 6x. Well, f prime x equals 3 times the derivative of x squared is 2x. 3 times 2x equals 6x. That's the constant multiple rule. Whenever you're using poly whenever you're differentiating polynomials, you'll see that you're going to be using the constant multiple rule fairly frequently. Now, continuing onward, we have the sum rule. The sum rule is what you might expect. If we have to figure out the derivative of a sum of two functions, f of x and g of x, that's the, that's the same thing, it's the same thing as summing the derivatives. So we take the derivative of f of x and we add it to the derivative of g of x. Very, very simple. And the same works with the difference rule. There we go. No tricks. Very simple, very straightforward. Therefore, let's, let's give an example of using both the sum and the difference rule. Right now, let's say f of x equals 6x to the fifth minus 3x squared plus 2x minus 7. Well, what we can do here is we can break this down using the rules. The derivative is going to be 6 times, constant multiple rule, 6 times the derivative of x to the fifth. Minus 3 times, constant uh, multiple rule and the difference rule, 3 times the derivative of x squared. Sum rule plus 2 times the derivative of x. Minus difference rule, the derivative of 7. And we know, therefore, that f prime x, the derivative of this function, equals 30x to the fourth minus 6x plus 2. Yep, there you go. That is an illustration of the sum, difference, and constant multiple rule all in work. Are all in effect. And of course, we remember that the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Just remember that for now. We're going to talk a lot more about the exponential later. Um, but there are a couple other points that I'd like to illustrate before we really break, break down the exponential function. All right, now this was a very, very short lesson with just a bunch of rules. So now I'm going to leave you with the big problem for this week. This week, um, the, function, the, uh, the question is, differentiate the following function. u equals the fifth root of t plus four times the square root of t to the fifth power. Now you will want to break down, uh, if you remember what we did, Square root of x equals x to the one half. Remember that. The cubed root of x equals x to the one third. You'll want to know those identities in order to differentiate this function the right way. Now, in the past two chapters, I've been throwing a lot of practical applications at you. In this chapter, most of the big problems are going to be very computational because in this chapter we're going over the rules of differentiation. Chap the next chapter afterwards, we're going to 
apply all of these rules and then you're going to get a lot more applications. And you'll even get some applications towards the end of this chapter. Uh, but sorry, we're just going to have to use brute force computations for a little while. Well, next time we're going to talk about two more very important rules. We've talked about the constant multiple rule. We've talked about the sum rule and the difference rule. Next time we're going to talk about the product rule and the quotient rule. So join me next time and take care. Bye-bye, y'all.